Hey guys, Jennifer here with The Family Fudge, and in today's video, I had planned to share with you our experience flying on Virgin Atlantic from Orlando to London Heathrow. I'd planned to share with you all of the amenities on board, what the food was like, but what I hadn't planned on sharing is what happens when you have a medical emergency mid-flight. Now, I wish I could say that this was clickbait, but it is not, but more on that later. Before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And now, let's start from the beginning. Tonight, we are flying to London. Now we did take a trip to London last year, but I didn't really vlog our flight. So in this video, I'm gonna take you along with us. We are flying out of the Orlando airport and we're flying into London Heathrow, but this is gonna be kind of a red eye flight. Hopefully we'll get some sleep. Although I did pack plenty of snacks and activities. Now, if you are interested in exactly what I packed, you can go ahead and check out this video. So it was a little bit of a challenge to pack everything. I did have to take out a few items, but right now we just have a little bit of time until our Uber will be here to drive us to the airport. Now I have to say I am a little bit sad today because we're leaving our girl. Now I know she is going to be fine. We got her the same cat sitter that she had last year. And to prepare for that, I did try to tidy up our house as best as I could. And I also put up lots of Halloween decorations because by the time we come back from this trip, it's almost gonna be Halloween. So here we have the kids outfit of the day. And yes, I do like to dress everybody in their designated color which also happens to match their suitcases and their backpacks. On the airplane last year, it was freezing cold, so I made sure to get lots of warm clothes for the kids. But right now, when we're leaving, it's almost 100 degrees, so they're gonna go ahead and change into their shorts. And then once they get cold, they can definitely change back into their longer pants. Now, as far as my outfit for today, I'm going super comfy, but I am sort of mixing up my fandoms here. I've got my Harry Potter hat, but my Sleeping Beauty shirt. I've got some comfy bike shorts, but I will also be bringing leggings so that when I get cold, I can change them. And of course, I just have some comfy shoes and a comfy jacket. And Kenzie, Kenzie's got her cool Taylor Swift shirt. I love it. And 45 minutes later, we're at the airport. But now we still have how long until our flight? Three hours. Three hours, well, let's get through security. Now, the thing about this airport is that sometimes you can get through security in like 10 to 15 minutes, and other times it could take up to an hour. And so we don't wanna to be too early, but you definitely don't wanna cut it too close to either. And there's a sleepy guy right there. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah. What's the first thing you're gonna do on the plane? Watch a movie. Watch a movie. One of the cool things about this airport is that they have a hotel, but then they also have lots of fun stores. Over here, we have the Disney store, and then way over there is the Universal store. Now, the Disney store here at the airport has almost everything that you'd find at Disney World. They have lots of things for Halloween right now, including spirit jerseys and ears. These are cute, I love these hats, but I'm not gonna buy anything here today because I'm saving my money for Disneyland Paris. And then right across from the Disney store, we have the Universal store. And of course, the store has everything, Harry Potter. They have t-shirts, they have plushies. I love this Luna one. You can even pick out a wand. 
But of course, I'm not shopping for any of that stuff today. I need to get through with security. Right now, the security line says anywhere between 13 to 17 minutes, so that's not bad at all. Like I said, sometimes it could take over an hour. So 17 minutes turned into about 30 minutes to get through with security, and we think it was because of this dark chocolate. I'm not sure why, but I think it set off some kind of an alarm. And now to get to our gate, we have to take the people mover. So we made it to the airport, we made it through security. Now I can relax. It looks like our flight is 10 minutes delayed. That's not too bad. You got an extra 10 minutes on top of your two hours. And now we wait. Okay guys, it is almost 9.30 and they are just starting dinner. Yeah, we got Lily and Griffin the kids meal, but we don't know what it is exactly. Let's find out. Okay, let's see what's in here. Careful, it's, it's hot. Oh, it's noodles. It looks like penne pasta with tomato sauce, some grilled chicken and broccoli. To go with that, it looks like we also got some mixed veggies tomato, carrot, and broccoli. There's also a little roll with butter. And then what's the dessert, honey? A salted caramel brownie. Well, that's good, you like that. <laughs> good thing we brought snacks, huh? So we saw the kids' dinner, and here is the adult dinner. And sorry, it's kind of dark in here. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. We had the choice between either chicken or veggie pasta, and I went with the chicken. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of chicken it is. It is very hot. I'm gonna try my best to open it with what he had. Okay, so I overheard that this is supposed to be a chicken and pie. So I can see there's like a, a crust on the top, a chicken on the bottom, and looks like some roasted potatoes. There's also 
some cheese and a cracker for the veggie it looks like a little salad maybe a greek salad i think that's better i also got two little chocolate brownie cookies and a dinner roll and i'm gonna be giving these to lily here you go okay guys now for the part of our flight that we never saw coming so pretty much right after dinner was served and cleaned up they started turning off all the lights inside the aircraft so that people could go to sleep at this point all of my kids were already asleep and i really needed to get some sleep too so i put my headphones on with some nice soft music and i leaned my head against the window and i fell asleep almost immediately about two hours later however i was woken up to one of the scariest experiences i've ever had on an airplane so there i was snoozing away when i got a tap on my shoulder by one of the flight attendants and she asks me are you traveling with someone named john and i looked at her confused and i said yes why and she says he's okay but he's just passed out and I just remember looking at her saying, what? What do you mean passed out? Because you guys, my husband John is kind of a tough guy. He doesn't ever get sick. He certainly doesn't pass out. So I thought for sure she must be wrong or have the wrong guy. But then the flight attendant asked me if I could come with her to help the situation and to answer some questions. So I knew she wasn't joking. Now, since I was at the window, I had to climb over a sleeping lily and a sleeping Mackenzie. And as I followed the flight attendant, I came across one of the biggest shocks of my life. John, right on the floor of the airplane outside of the bathroom. And he was between the jump seats where the flight attendant sit and the actual door of the aircraft. But I could just barely see him. Like I said, it was dark. And he was also surrounded by about three or four different flight attendants. And they were giving him oxygen. And at least two of the flight attendants were trying to get his bleeding to stop. And that's because when he passed out, he fell and hit his face somewhere on the aircraft. It left a huge gash on his eyelid and on his cheek. Now, normally I am not the type of vlogger who whips out her camera to film an injury for YouTube, but the flight attendants actually asked me to take some pictures and some videos, not only for my own personal records, but also so that I could show them to the doctor in case we needed to go to the hospital. And you guys, here's what we think happened. Shortly after the dinner was served, he started feeling like he was going to be sick. So we quickly got up to get to the bathroom, but he only made it about two steps before he passed out. So maybe it was the food, we don't know. But we found out later that oftentimes when someone passes out on an airplane, it's because of a lack of oxygen combined with the airplane cabin pressure. Now, thankfully, the flight attendants were able to patch up his eye. And after about 45 minutes on the floor of the aircraft, they had me take him back to his seat. I had to quickly wake up the kids and let them know what was going on. And I had to rearrange their seating so that I could sit next to John to make sure he didn't fall asleep. After a few hours, we finally landed. John was definitely looking swollen, but he was feeling okay. As soon as we got off the aircraft, we were met with an entire team of people to help us. He had several EMTs check him over more thoroughly, and other than the injury to his eye and his face, everything else was looking okay. At this point, they told us that we could leave, but that if John started feeling sick or confused, that I would need to take him straight to the hospital. Now, overall, this was definitely not the experience we expected to have, but at the same time I'm thankful that it wasn't more serious and I'm also really thankful for all the flight attendants and the crew that really helped us out everybody was so kind and very helpful now friends make sure to stay tuned because in our next video we're moving on we're heading into London we're gonna give you a tour of our apartment do some grocery shopping and have lunch at Buckingham Palace thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video